Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online as we worship together on this first Sunday after Trinity. Although lockdown restrictions are gradually being relaxed and it might be possible to open our churches for private prayer over the coming days and weeks, public worship remains suspended. So worship continues to be offered from the safety of our homes. So welcome to our service today particularly to any who are joining us for the first time. If you'd like to know anything more about the Benefice, please do visit our website. And I'm grateful to members of the Benefice Choir who have recorded themselves this week singing a hymn from their own homes, which has been mixed together for us. And I apologise in advance that that mixing is perhaps not quite as perfect as it might be, but it's nonetheless lovely to hear them singing again. Today we're reminded of God's compassion for us and for the world. And so at the beginning of this time of worship together, we ask that each one of us might feel God with us in a special way, wherever we are. So we start with the prayer of preparation. And if you know the words, please join in. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in the ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Jill is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you received without payment, give without payment. Having celebrated Lent, Easter, Pentecost, and last week Trinity Sunday, we're now in what is referred to as ordinary time, and our readings return again to focusing on this year's Gospel, that of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel is characterised by alternating blocks of narrative material followed by collected teachings. Chapter 9 ends one of these blocks of narrative and chapter 10 begins a collection of teaching, essentially a teaching about mission. In fact, some commentators refer to chapters 5 to 7 as the Sermon on the Mount and chapter 10 as the Sermon on Mission. So our reading this week can be seen as a bridge between these two different blocks of text. The end of the narrative section in chapter 9 is significant because it attributes compassion to Jesus as his motivation for doing his healing ministry. We read, 
When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. This is a fascinating insight by Matthew into the heart of Jesus. He sees people who are harassed and helpless and has compassion on them. The word that Matthew uses for compassion in this verse is one of my favourite Greek words, splagni zumai. It's translated as meaning bowels of yearning or to be moved as to one's bowels. Because in the ancient world, the bowels were thought to be the seat of love and pity. And this, according to Matthew, is the kind of truly gut-wrenching compassion that Jesus had for the crowds of his day and is inseparable from the compassion of God. The same Greek word is used of the father as he sees his son returning home and rushes out to greet him in the parable of the prodigal son. It is the same word that's used of the Samaritan who binds up the wounds of the man mugged on the Jericho road. It is the same word used of Jesus' response to two blind men who call out to him for mercy. This is the real good news of the kingdom, that Jesus comes to demonstrate in every possible way the total compassion of God for every person. And that's good news for us. We've probably all felt harassed or helpless at some time in our lives, perhaps especially so in this time of restriction and lockdown. And so there is a real sense of connection with Jesus. For some of us, perhaps we need to hear it and take it on board and cling to the knowledge that God has compassion on us. For others, perhaps we need to hear the call to demonstrate that compassion, just as Jesus called twelve then many others to go in his name. And what did Jesus tell the disciples to do? The authority he gave them is simply his own example, his compassion, care, forgiveness, healing and driving out evil. John reminds us that after Jesus had washed his disciples' feet, he says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Something that I'm constantly reminded as I read scripture is that the majority of the things that Jesus did in his earthly life, that he commissioned us to copy, are the simplest but most life-changing acts of care, encouragement, forgiveness, of chasing out the darkness. This is the good news of the kingdom, good news that our world needs to hear today. Amen.
Anne is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, a crowd is a dirty word at the moment, as we fear they might spread a virus. But your son saw the helplessness of the crowds, and it moved him to compassion. We see the helplessness caused by racial tension, lives overtaken by fear of brutality, families crippled by grief, homes and happiness destroyed. We ask that the will and the way to find peaceful solutions to intractable quarrels might grow in every heart. We see the helplessness caused by economic injustice, livelihoods snatched away, children tormented by hunger, futures emptied of hope. We look for your wisdom and selfless concern in the decisions of world leaders. We see the helplessness caused by fear of the stranger, immigrants shunned because of hostile caricatures, the lives of people of colour thwarted by prejudice, the mentally unwell frustrated by another's ignorance, and even people who simply pass us by as they and we are mutually fearful of COVID-19. We hope for a spirit of welcome which will pervade every community. We see the helplessness that obstructs the living out of our Christian lives, nagging doubts and petty vanities that rise up as obstacles hindering obedience. We pray for the grace that we each need to fulfil our baptismal call to be disciples of Jesus today. May this world that you love yield in abundance the fruits of your kingdom, and may we be faithful labourers, bringing about your kingdom here and now. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we share the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. Ilona and I will continue to pray for everyone in the benefice at 10 o'clock on Sunday's mornings. There will be another service available next Sunday, which you will find on our website. We hope to see some of you for coffee in the Benefice Zoom room at 11 o'clock on Sunday or 10.30 on Tuesdays. Details how to join are on our website. During this week, I'll be discussing with the PCCs how and when we might be able to open our churches again for private prayer. Information about that will be emailed out and put on our website. And so now our service ends with a blessing. May God's Spirit equip you with the compassion of Christ and the strength that you need to continue his mission in the world and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.